Hi, I'm Rev. Jake Zabe, and welcome to Children's Bible Stories. Alright children, today we're going to do the Bible story of Jesus Rejected at Nazareth, and joined with me today is my helper, Acolyte Heinrich. Say hello, Heinrich. Yeah, why? And so Jesus was traveling around doing his Galilean ministry, and he came to the city of... Nazareth. Yes, the town that he grew up in. And he came to the local synagogue, and because Jesus was a rabbi... And Heinrich, what's a rabbi? A teacher. Yeah, a rabbi means teacher, so it's kind of like a pastor, a minister. So they gave Jesus the scroll for today, and he, he rolled it out, and he began to read the Bible reading for that day. And the Bible reading for that day came from the prophet... Isaiah. And particularly from chapter 61, verses 1 and 2. And Jesus read it, and the prophecy read... The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And so this prophecy was a prophecy about the Messiah. Yeah, also known as the Christ. Christ. So, Messiah is the Hebrew word, Christ is the Greek word, and they are both the word for anointed one. One who gets generally anointed with oil, like a king. So remember King David was called the anointed of the Lord? That word is the Messiah of the Lord. And so there was many prophecies throughout the Old Testament that predicted that one day would come a special anointed one of the Lord, a special Messiah who would save God's people. And this is why this prophecy says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. And so this was a prophecy about the Messiah and the Jews knew this. And so Jesus read the Bible verse and then he got up to preach his sermon. They said, oh cool, Jesus just read one of the prophecies about the Messiah. This would be great. He's going to He's going to explain about how the Messiah is going to come and save us. You, you listen to this. And instead of getting up and Jesus giving a long sermon explaining this passage, he just simply said, This passage has been fulfilled in your hearing today. What does that mean, Heinrich? It means that Jesus was saying that he was the Messiah. That's right. So the prophecy says that the Messiah was coming and Jesus got up and says, well, that prophecy has been fulfilled today. Meaning Jesus says, I'm the Messiah. And the people marveled. They're going, what? What, what? what did he just say? Isn't, the, isn't this the, the carpenter's son? Yeah, isn't this Joseph's son? How, how, how's he the Messiah? And they all marveled at it. And Jesus said to them, Surely you will say this to me. Physician, heal yourself. Whatever you have done at Capernaum, do also in this country. He said, Assuredly, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. And so this was Jesus saying that they're going to reject him because he's come from this town and they won't believe he's the Messiah. And then Jesus quotes two Old Testament stories to prove his point. The first story he tells is the story of Elijah and the... Widow of them. Yeah. So do you remember that story, Heinrich? What happened in that story? So Elijah went out to the region of Tyre and Sidon to the town of Zarephath. And he came to a widow and asked if he could have something to eat. And she said... She only had a handful of oil and flour. That's right. She only had a little bit left and she was going to make a small pancake for her and her son to eat. And then they were going to eat it and die. But Elijah said, no. Nope. Go and make enough for yourself and for me, and we'll sit down and we'll eat together. And did the woman do that? Yes. Because she had? Faith. Yeah, she believed the promise of Elijah that she would have enough flour and oil to make for all of them. And so, the whole time during the drought and the famine that Elijah stayed with the widow and the boy, they had unlimited flour and oil. Also, while they were there... The boy died, 
But what did Elijah do? He resurrected him. Hmm. And so, and so Jesus says, there was many widows in Israel, but Elijah didn't go to any of them. Instead, he went to the widow at Zarephath. And why did he do that? Because she had faith. That's right. There were many widows in Israel, but none of them had faith. And so, Elijah didn't go to them. Instead, he went to the widow of Zarephath, where she did have faith. And by her faith, she was saved. Then Jesus also tells another story about the healing of... Naaman. Yeah, Naaman, the Syrian general, who had... What did he have, Heineck? He had... Sores. What type of sores, Heineck? They were called... Leprosy. Yeah, so he had leprosy, and Elisha healed him as well. And Jesus again said... There were many lepers in Israel, and yet... None of them believed. Mm -hmm. Only Naaman got healed of his leprosy, and that's because he had... Faith. And so, Heinrich, why did Jesus tell these two stories to the people at Nazareth? Because they, they were trusting in their ways to save them rather than faith. That's correct. See? The Bible tells us that the sons of Abraham are God's people. And the Jews thought that that meant as long as they were descended from Abraham by blood, that they were part of the race of the Jewish people, that they would be saved. But Jesus comes to tell them that, no, it is not your ethnicity that saves you. It's not your race that saves you. It's faith in God that saves you. The widow at Zarephath, Naaman the Syrian, neither of them were Jews, and yet they got saved because they had faith. Yeah. Jesus told them, just because you're a Jew does not mean you'll be saved. As St. Paul tells us in the book of Romans, those who have the faith of Abraham are the true sons of Abraham. And Paul tells us the story of Hanuk. Do you remember the story that Paul tells us about the olive tree? Paul says that there is an olive tree, which is God's people, and that was the Jews. But what happened to the unbelieving Jews that had no faith? They don't tie it off of the tree and burn it. Mm -hmm. And what happened to the Gentiles, the wild olives, that did have faith? They don't draft it into the tree. That's right. St. Paul tells us in Romans that God's people is like an olive tree. Those who don't have faith, even though they may be ethnically Jewish, they get cut off and thrown away. But those people who have faith, even though they may not be ethnically Jewish, like the widow of Zarephath and Naaman the Syrian, they get grafted into the tree and are now part of God's people. So, as Paul says, it is those who have faith who are the true sons of Abraham. And so Jesus came to tell the people at Nazareth that, look, just because you're Jews... Just because you're descended from Abraham, that means nothing to God. It is faith in the Messiah, faith in me, Jesus the Messiah. That is what's going to save you. And if you don't believe, what's going to happen to those who don't believe, huh, Nick? They'll get cut off the tree and burned. Yeah, where are they going to get burnt? They of fire. Yeah. And so when Jesus had taught this lesson to the people that their race wouldn't save them, what did they do? They got really mad at him. Yeah, they were angry and they seized Jesus. They said, grab him, get him, boys, tackle him, get him. And what did they do with him, Heinrich? They want to drag him? Okay. Yeah. What did they do, Heinrich? They dragged him to a twiff and tried to throw him off. Yeah. So Nazareth was on a bit of a hill. And they took Jesus to the edge of the city, up onto a cliff, and they were going to throw Jesus off. So here, all the crowds are here. They're ready to throw Jesus off the cliff. Like, oh, this naughty blasphemer. Let's kill him for saying that he's the Messiah. And they're about to throw Jesus off the cliff. But what happened? He just passed through the cloud. Mm -hmm. Cloud. And so Jesus, yeah, he just used his divine powers to just walk away. 
He didn't fight them, he didn't kick them, he didn't hurt them, he just walked off, just left. And that then is the story of Jesus being rejected at Nazareth. I've been your host, Reverend Jake Zabel. Thanks to Acolyte Heinrich for your help. Goodbye and all boys.